over a very simple edge to AI use case in the real world. We're going to be monitoring what's going on within our trucks around the country. So what we've done is we take a device that has a camera as well as a number of sensors and has some processing on it. We put Minify on there which is a sub project of Apache Nifi. Uh, these Cloud Era tools let us do uh, classification on those images using Apache MXNet, TensorFlow Cafe, uh, being enhanced with the Intel Movidius TPU, or any of those libraries that you wish to use on your own. And we run that right from our Minify that's running on that device. We capture images, sensor readings, whatever we need to run, clean up, and then we send it over SSL, possibly extra encrypt that and we send that right to our cluster that cluster could be running anywhere ours is running in a cloud you know you could have different regional data centers to run this in or various clouds or in different uh, availability zones within multiple clouds so when we get that data in there's a couple different kinds of data we have image data I've got data from those uh, cafe results I've got data from tensorflow I do a little different processing on there Make sure that data is valid. You know, if it's da a valid, let me route on that. Data is processing very quickly. You know, see if it's a JPEG. See if it's TensorFlow. Do a couple things. For one set of data, I'm going to push that right to my operational data store. That JSON can be quickly converted by our processors into data that I put right into HBase. No intermediate step, boom, that's right into HBase as an operational record to use right away. Another thing I'm doing is I'm going to do some alerting. Now I'm going to be able to check values in that streaming data using simple SQL. And as you can see here, I'm looking. If the temperature is not within our operational bounds, I'm going to send a message to a Slack channel telling me what that value was, from what device, and a unique idea on that if I need to track that through the system. This is just one example of an alert. I could have as many alerts as you need here, and I could have any outcome you want, including maybe sending messages back to that device to do something, sending an email, sending an SMS, whatever you need to send. I'm also getting that data in storing it in ORC files, Parquet files, and I'm making that available as Hive and uh, Impala tables. Very easy to do that. Second part I'm doing is, remember I mentioned images. So images are coming into the system. I can move them to S3, store them in HDFS, put them in GitHub, do a lot of different ways to store it. I store it locally in a file system. I can also do some processing on that. We already did AI at the edge. I'm going to do AI, AI in the stream a couple different ways. One way, right here, I'm taking it, running it as it's coming through, pushing that image through an MXNet processor that I wrote, and it's giving me back, this is an SSD one, so I'm doing single shot detection. So I'm seeing I have five different things I found in that image. I've got the height, width, the probability, the name, Mac, uh, X coordinate so I could draw a box around that if I want to annotate that data. Otherwise, I could look right into that image. And I'm doing TensorFlow, I'm doing Inception on that same data at the same time. And then when I'm done with that, the data, the image is stored. I am going to build a URL for that image, whether it's an S3, Web HDFS, wherever you care to store that. And I'm going to call in, as you see, I'm doing that right here. Call in to a class I built with Cloudera Data Science Workbench. Now, I didn't know what to write right away. But, so I looked at uh, Apache MXNet I'm a little familiar with. I used one of their pre-trained models from the Model Zoo that does YOLO. I thought that would be a nice thing to do. I played around with it. After looking at the results, looking at the image, I play around with the code within our workbench and I can see exactly what I want to do with it. it this is a nice way to explore your code in uh, interactive coding sessions. I could also have done that in Jupyter or Zeppelin and then move the code over here. 
do a little fine tuning, make sure it's uh, modular, accepts a parameter. Here I'm returning JSON back. That JSON is going to be hosted by a model. This is great. You know, how did I move my experiment into production? Easy. I drop that code here. I create this. And now I've got something that can be tested. It's monitored. Here's the results. I'm monitoring all the times it calls. What are the results? You know, rebuild this. What's nice is it's taking that Python 3 and those libraries I need. And it's deploying it as a Docker image on top of Kubernetes. So you see here, 8 gig of RAM, two virtual CPUs, two cores we're using for this. This is a great way to be able to do this. And if we look in NiFi, I call that and I'm getting data back. What do I do with that data? I, I thought of some. I could, there's a ton of things I could do. But because of the power of the Cloudera Data Science Workbench, I'm going to take that data. I'm going to format that a little bit. And then I'm going to send that to another Cloudera data science project. I have one I've been playing with here to store that in a Parquet file. And once I have it in Parquet, I can start running queries on it. So I call this very simple Spark job that I wrote in uh, Python 3. It's a uh, this file here, which you can see we can go right into it. It takes those parameters in. Uh, you know, formats things, creates a unique ID, creates some JSON. I put this right into a Parquet file into HDFS, and now this job is available. I could run this pretty traditionally, just, you know, hit run, or I can hit, uh, I could schedule this, or as you see right now, it's running right now. I called it from NiFi as part of my flow. And when that's done, I'll get some results on that. And I could see what's going on. I get all this status that I can either hear if there's an error. I could send that to Slack and say, okay, what's the error? Okay, someone should take a look at this. I could contact someone. Or that's the group where people are watching, looking for errors. And then when this is done, I can explore this data with my workbench. The workbench gives me these interactive coding sessions where I can do things like PySpark code with uh, Spark SQL to look at data, convert it into a panda, make a nice data frame display. Let me take a look at my data. Sure, this looks good. You know, and then I can hand this data off to someone else on my team. They can create a nice dashboard. They can create uh, charts, graphs. They could even put an application on top of this model I have here or this other data. You know, everything is open to them now that I can stream this data in from the edge to AI with AI at every step along the way, with big data and storage along the way. Everything is together, very easy, one solution, all secure, all scalable, every cloud.